so great. I know I've been wanting to talk to you for a while because I know you're one of, um, you know, I would call you one of our more conscious artists mm-hmm. in general that we yes. have play at the at the belly of. And yes. I know we really appreciate it, and the the fans do too. Yeah, and and you know, since I started to get more serious about my diet and everything, you know, um, like a year and a half ago, two years ago, I was like one. 190, you know, 190 mm-hmm. pounds. And just by changing my diet and being more conscious about my food, I've dropped down to 165 now. Wow. And, and, and I, I don't think I'm going to change my course in dietary. I, I, I actually um, would like to study nutrition. Uh-huh. I would like to go back wow. to school and or do an online course uh-huh. wow. about nutrition and become a nutritionist. Wow. Oh, my gosh. You heard it here, guys. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's awesome. So I don't really have many boundaries as far as boundaries go. I remember the other day I went to Brazil. <laughs> the other day I went to Brazil. And I did like a, the other day I went to Walmart. I did a huge, huge festival <laughs> in Brazil, and there was all these fans screaming, Go Pato! Go Pato! Uh-huh. And they sent, the, they sent like this official security guards with guns and badges uh-huh. and everything. And they were stopping me from getting close to my fans. So they put me in this room. And there was like two of them outside my room. And I got out the window. No. And I ran and I got to all the fans. Are you kidding? <laughs> and all the fans was blown away. And they was like, you crazy. <laughs> you crazy. You come to the fans. Wow. And I was signing autographs, taking photos. And the security realized that I was missing. They ran down to where I was. And I said, karma. Karma, mi amigo. Karma. Wow. <laughs> and they just stood there going, okay, okay. Because... I've noticed that when you are an artist and you play the game of security and uh-huh. avoiding and running, they want to grab you. It's yeah, a challenge. that's very true, yeah. You know, they really want to grab you because they know that they've only got a moment. Right. You know, but when you go to the people, mm-hmm. it almost catches them off guard. Yes. And then when you're not in a rush, it's like... It's a blessing for them because then they can get a photo with you. They know that Connect with if you. there's five of them in, in line want to get a photo, they know that you know, you're not going to rush off so they don't have to push. They don't right. have to get aggressive. You know? yep. So it's a blessing to me to just give. You know? mm-hmm. and, and the thing is for me as well, fans give to the artists. Mm-hmm. Artists don't exist without fans spending their money right. and their energy mm-hmm. and their time. So they deserve to get respect. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So oh my I, gosh, why I, can't I, every artist be I, you I, I give it back. <laughs> on the entire planet? And, and I think I've learned that lesson because I'm a fan. You know? yeah. When I got involved in reggae music and I started doing reggae sunsplash tour in the world with all of these artists, and then I got a chance to work with Peter Gabriel and tour with a lot of famous I saw, yeah, uh, UB40 you worked yeah. with. Yeah. And Sting yes, and all these people. Amazing. I'm a fan. Mm-hmm. You know, so... I've, I've done festivals with lots of artists, and I'm one of the headliners. And I run up to the other artists, and I go, Hi, I'm so happy <laughs> to meet you. And then they're like, Get away from me. <laughs> and then somebody goes to them, That's Pato Banton. <laughs> and they're like, Oh, I'm so sorry. sorry. But it's too late. Yeah. You know, yeah, at you that blew. point, yeah. you've already shown me how you treat yeah. really, the yeah. average person. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to be that person that hurts somebody's feelings when they're a big fan. You know, last night we did a show at the Whiskey A Go Go mm-hmm. in Los Angeles. And um, we didn't get out of there till when? Two o'clock? It, it, was, about, it was about two o'clock. And um, there was this guy, a homeless guy with a skateboard and a huge backpack. And he was like, is Pato Banton here? And I was packing the car. And the, the, the club security, not my security, mm-hmm. the security of the club, they were helping me move some of the gear into the car. And they looked at this homeless guy and goes, Pato Banton's gone. Because oh. everybody had gone. I was, there was only a few of us mm-hmm. left at the venue. And the guy looked so disappointed. Mm-hmm. But I was only like five feet from him. With, you know, and I heard the guy say, Pato Banton's ah. gone. So I turned around, and I didn't want to make the security guy look like a liar. Right. And blow up, because he was trying to protect to, me. Right, yep. So I said to the guy, hi, what's your name? What do you do? And I started a conversation with him. So we ended up speaking on the street 
outside of Whiskey A Go Go for about 30 minutes. Oh my gosh. And he started telling me that he's been listening to Pato Banton <laughs> since 1982 when I did a song with an English beat uh -huh. called Pato and Raja Go Talk. <sighs> now, if I didn't talk to this guy, I would have thought he was just a homeless bum mm -hmm. that was just trying to get some money from Pato Banton or something. But I realized he was actually a huge Real fan. ska fan uh -huh. first of the English beat. And, and then he knew me through, his, through that connection. And so uh, 